Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart. It's time for another edition of Breaking News. Today is Monday, the 25th day of March 2024. And as always, we have some important stories for you. In fact, today, fascinatingly, we have five headlines and each one fits a different sign that we've talked about in our book, 25 Signs. We are near the end that basically show the signs that the Bible predicts what the world will be like in the last days. And it's amazing. Five headlines, each fits a different sign as we'll be looking at it. Okay, a couple of other things. We're going to, when we do breaking news, we'll get it done by noon. Every day we do it, noon Pacific time. Before I was doing it by 6 a.m. Pacific time, I found out that took too much out of my body, even though I get up at sometimes 3, 4 in the morning. I'm sleeping in all, all the way now at 5. So um, by noon, we'll have them the days that we do them. So thank you for understanding that. And also, too, we, we mentioned a week ago when we started doing these again that we're not going to post any comments. I don't read comments. We're not going to post them simply because it takes too much of my time. Uh, I do all of this by myself, by the way, on the website. Everything is done by me. I only have so many hours in the day. I'm in the process of redoing, expanding, and uh, enlarging all of my books, or recording these various videos and posting them on YouTube, and then our uh, app, Educating Our World with Don Stewart, where you can get on the App Store, both Google or Android, I guess it is, and Apple. And so um, thanks for understanding that. Now, when we do the Your Bible Questions Answered, I'm going to start doing that again. On certain occasions, I will allow questions from you on the website. And I'll mention that. It'll be on our YouTube channel. And I'll talk about that when we do them. But they'll be very specific, the ones we allow. All right? All right. Well, this is interesting. Let's look at these five headlines and five separate signs. First headline, there are no words for this. North Carolina megachurch says it will avoid using the words Calvary, resurrection, and blood of Jesus to promote Easter Sunday services. I'm not making this up. A North Carolina megachurch says it will not mention words like Calvary, resurrection, or phrases like the blood of Jesus to promote Easter Sunday services. I'm not going to say the word Calvary. I'm not going to say the word resurrection. I'm not going to say the blood of Jesus, right? I'm not going to say any of these words that make someone make someone feels like an outsider, said Nikki Shearer, the digital content creator for Elevation Church. This is really an important guiding principle. Well, I'm sorry, the gospel is the about the death of Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ. Calvary was the place he died, Golgotha. Uh, it says in the Hebrew, Calvary is the Latin translation of it as we brought it into English. Resurrection, of course, is the whole reason we're here as believers, because Christ came back from the dead three days after he died on Calvary's cross. He died on Good Friday. He rose on Easter Sunday morning. And so we're going to use terms like that here in Christian have for the last 2,000 years. I'm sorry, this church doesn't do it, but uh, this church has not been a very solid church from the very beginning. So again, uh, not surprising. It fits one of our signs, sign 19 of our 25 signs. The organized church will turn away from the faith or will be an apostate. It'll fall away from the truths of the Orthodox Christianity. And here's a great example of it in our first headline. Our second headline, another terrible one. UN chief says there is growing consensus to tell Israel that a ceasefire is needed. <laughs> growing consensus, yeah. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said during a visit to Jordan on Monday that there is a growing international consensus to tell Israel that a ceasefire is needed and that an assault on Rafah would cause a humanitarian disaster. We see a growing consensus emerging in the international community to tell the Israelis that the ceasefire is needed, and I also see a growing consensus. Uh, I hear, heard in the U.S., I heard from the European Union, not to mention, of course, the Muslim world, to tell clearly to Israelis that any ground invasion, invasion of Rafah could mean a humanitarian disaster. He told this at a press conference during a tour of Jordan's Wehat, Wehat camp, where the U.N. Palestinian refugee agency, UNRWA, provides health and education services. That's, of course, a terrorist organization, too, by the way. The top UN official said the agency was a lifeline of hope and dignity for millions of refugees across the region. He couldn't be more wrong on that. It's an organization that promotes anti-Semitism, hate for Israel, and many of the terrorists that uh, were involved in the October 7th murder uh, of about 1,400 Israelis were from this organization or take part of it. 
Now, again, this is sign 21 of our 25 signs. We're near the end where it says there'll be a rise in anti-Semitism. The entire world will be against Israel. So it's not surprising there's a consensus of, against Israel because by saying we don't want you to go into Rafa, we don't want you to defeat Hamas, we want these murderers to win, and we want them to still exist and still be a part of the, the dialogue there. In other words, this, this group, this group that's in Gaza, whose charter says calls for the destruction of the state of Israel, we think you ought to let them still survive. It's ridiculous, but this is the world we live in. So that's headline two. Headline number three, now this one just came over the wire a little while ago, and this one is very, very sad and very, very bothersome. Here's the headline. U.S. abstention on UNSC ceasefire boat triggers major crisis. The UNSC is United Nations Security Council, by the way. In the wake of the Biden betrayal, Netanyahu cancels trip of senior Israeli officials summoned to Washington. Here's the story. The United States has abstained on a United Nations Security Council resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire to mark the Muslim holiday of Ramadan, which has another two weeks to run. The remaining 14 council members vote for the resolution, so it passed. Washington has been previously averse to use the word ceasefire in relation to the nearly six-month-old war in the Gaza Strip and has used its veto power to block previous resolutions. While the current resolution calls for the release of hostages, it doesn't make their release a condition for calling or for ending the conflict immediately. In other words, they call for the release of hostages, they call for immediate ceasefire, but they don't link the two together. It's the first time they haven't done that. The U.S. intersectional representative said that the U.S. did not vote with the resolution because it did not condemn Hamas. All right. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has previously warned that a refusal by the U.S. to veto the U.S. The United Nations Security Council resolution would cause him to cancel the visit of the National Security Council uh, that was supposed to meet later on Monday. And so he did cancel the visit after the vote. He confirmed the delegation would not be sent from Israel. They will not come to the U.S. The visit was the result of an American's summons, as we mentioned this last week, to hear the alternatives to Israel's planned and approved operation to Rafa essential for defeating Hamas in the Gaza war and for retrieving the more than 100 Israeli hostages. Of course, all that, that would happen is these representatives from Israel would go to Washington and be told what you're supposed to do, what you can't do on how to not win the war in Gaza. The U.S. has not been a friend of Israel. They continue not to be in this situation, and it's horrible. But now, they, for the first time, they voted with the United in the United Nations not to veto a resolution that basically said, Yes, we want to see a ceasefire. Yes, we want to see the hostages released, but we don't necessarily have to see them both linked together. In other words, let's have the ceasefire and we'll see if we can get the hostages out sooner rather than later. Terrible. All right. This fits sign 11 of our 25 signs. No superpower will intervene on Israel's behalf when they are invaded. Ezekiel 30, 39, something will happen in the United States. And we're seeing that we're imploding from within, just like Rome. Remember the four kingdoms that Daniel talks about? In Daniel chapter 2, and interpreting Nebuchadnezzar's dream, and also in Daniel chapter 7, when he saw them not as a great statue as Nebuchadnezzar did, but as evil beast. Uh, each kingdom was destroyed by the, the next one. Babylon's destroyed by Medo-Persia, Medo-Persia by um, uh, Greece. Greece was destroyed by Rome and defeated by Rome, but Rome fell apart from the inside. They were never defeated, and Rome will come back, be put together again like Humpty Dumpty at the end of the age of revived Roman empires. We've talked about this, and so, um, but they fell apart, the Roman Empire, from within, and this is what's happening to the United States. All right, headline number four, the fighting does not stop in Israel's south or in its north today. Uh, this morning at 10.15 a.m. Israeli time, the Israeli Defense Force reports that overnight approximately 15 more launches from Lebanon toward IDF posts adjacent to Manara were identified. The launches fell into open areas and no injuries were reported, but they're still shooting rockets from Lebanon. It's again ramping up. 2.14 in the afternoon. Now, here's what's interesting. There is a rocket barrage on Ashdod, eight rockets. This is the first time in several months that there's been shooting from the Gaza Strip uh, towards the, the nation of Israel, towards the country of Israel, because they've been basically stopping them with all the incursions they're doing. But eight rockets were launched uh, at the city of Ashdod. Three were intercepted. Three fell into open areas. 
Uh, there's also other stories about sirens sounding up the northern part of Israel, more warnings on rockets coming in. Then later in the day, hostile aircraft infiltration, the Golan Heights at 3.20 in the afternoon. The point is, there's, it's continuing going on both north and the south, and yet um, the United Nations wants uh, Israel to call for a ceasefire for the next two weeks. Now, will that mean the other side stops firing? The answer is no, of course not. But um, this is the world we live in. This fits sign number seven of our 25 signs. Israel will be in a continual search for peace. And how can they have peace when they have no peace partners, either on the north with Hezbollah in Lebanon or with Hamas there in Gaza and Iran, of course, behind both of these terrorist organizations. All right, headline number five. Now, this one's fascinating because we're going to move geographically away from the Middle East. Headline five, there goes Latin America, Iran's regime in America's backyard. This is from Gatestone Institute, by the way. Uh, the Iranian regime, which has been calling for death to America, now has ballistic missiles, which it says can reach the United States, and claims to have a hypersonic missile that, according to one report, can destroy the U.S. in 40 seconds. Well, we'll see. Uh, Venezuela appears to have willingly embraced Iran's overture, so we have something in our hemisphere now that could attack us. The Iranian regime, in addition to Venezuela, has evidently also been exploring avenues for military cooperation with Nicaragua and Cuba. Uh, it is critical to recognize now the gravity of this exponential national security threat. It's becoming more and more exponential to the moment. All right, basically the story again from um, Gatestone, U.S. Representative Maria Elvira, Elvira Salazar pointed out that instead of turning a blind eye to this new geopolitical romance, the Biden administration should, should actively support political forces that share its commitment to combating terrorism and promoting regional stability, she added. Iran has been aggressively strengthening its ties to the Western Hemisphere through like-minded socialist regimes regime, such as Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Cuba. They're also looking for opportunities elsewhere. It's no coincidence that Iranian ships are docking in Brazil just a month after the socialists retook power in the country. Yeah, that's uh, Da Silva, Lulu is called. He was formerly is a socialist, formerly in prison. He won the Brazilian election. And uh, his inauguration signifies that Iran intends to expand militarily in the region and setting a precedent for other Latin American countries. Now, we know the U.S. has what's called the Monroe Doctrine that doesn't allow foreign entities in our hemisphere, whether North, Northern Hemis North America or South America, the Northern or Southern Hemisphere, uh, as a threat to us. And so we'll see if the Biden administration does anything about it. But they have been serving as fertile ground, as the article says, for Iranian covert intelligence operations and terror groups, with Venezuela emerging as a particularly troubling case. Revelations linking Venezuela to the issuance of passports to individuals associated with terrorist organizations such as Hezbollah raise uh, serious questions about the extent of Iran's influence in the region and its ramifications for U.S. security. Now, this fits perfectly with what the Bible says about the time of the end, because one of the main countries that will invade Israel in the last days is Israel 38, 39 invasion is the country of Iran, ancient Persia. Persia is mentioned there. And so they will be, a, a, you know, a powerhouse to be able uh, to invade along with Russia, which will be leading this. And so what we see, Iran not only, you know, uh, putting its tentacles out, uh, sponsoring terrorism around the world, but also here in the Southern Hemisphere, in North America and South America, uh, both shows, fulfills the fact that Iran will be a player in the last days with respect to invading Israel. And of course, we know from scripture, the Lord will destroy all the armies, every single one. Ezekiel 38 and 39 tells us that when they do this in the last day. So in this interesting, five stories and five specific signs each of these stories have that we talk about that are going to be um, fulfilled or being in process of being fulfilled. Again, our book, 25 Signs, we're near the end, is from our website, Educating Our World. It's a free download. It's under the heading of Bible Prophecy. There are 65 books there. You can download for free in PDF form on 11 different biblical topics. Everything we always do is free. This is our ministry. This is what we do. So please take advantage of it and tell others about it. All right, so a lot going on. We'll see what happens. Again, never a dull moment. Remember, this is Holy Week. Let's recall what happened 2,000 years ago this week. 
And uh, we dealt with Palm Sunday yesterday. The words of Jesus we'll be talking about later in the week when he talked about uh, uh, the temple's destruction, about coming back. And then, of course, Good Friday when he died for the sins of the world, Sunday morning when he came back from the dead. And it's because of those events that we are here today able to, with confidence, believe that there is an end game to all of this that's going on. The living God does exist, and he's told us what he's going to do past, present, what he has done in the past, what he's doing now in the present, what he's going to do in the future. And that's precisely what we see. All right, I'm Don Stewart. As always, thanks for watching. And until next time, may the Lord richly, richly bless.